to a, another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Just behind me, you can see this uh, picturesque fountain area, and I'm actually at the World Forestry Center um, in Portland, Oregon. And um, this center is uh, pretty significant. It has uh, connections to the 1905 Lewis and Clark um, World Expo um, here in Portland, and it has significance, I think, in terms of how it's focused on trying to uh, teach people about forests and issues of sustainability. So let me take you on a tour today. We'll get the camera going and show you some of the video, the sights, the sounds, and the interesting um, advocacy work here that's being done at the World Forestry Center. Okay, as we begin the tour, I'll show you some video, but um, I have two really quick clips. And um, this was, I thought, a cool feature just as you're coming up from the uh, bus station below the street. You'll see the elevator that takes you up. and what they're um, acknowledging here is the time. It's a very brief video. I apologize for that, but uh, I think it's one of, of many uh, quaint features that you see at the World Forestry Center. So I'm beginning here checking out some of the uh, interactive uh, exhibits. Again, there's a lot of uh, rich history behind uh, this particular center. I'm just going to take you inside the building. There are two working forests on the outside that you can certainly check out if you uh, travel to Portland. This particular feature here is um, one of the interactive features. You can um, basically look um, up and down this tree using a remote camera. There's a lot of information laid out also in the museum, and I'll show you some of that. Um, probably too much to uh, show. It's certainly a, um, a museum that you can visit in one day. You can definitely get it done in a few hours. There's a nominal uh, admission fee, and it is a nonprofit organization, so it's one of these I always say uh, it's a good thing to support, right, because they have A, a good mission, and B, they're not um, in it for profit, which is, you know, a, a contrast with a lot of the spaces I study um, in these videos. This one clearly has a, a very didactic focus. Um, again, I mentioned in the video about the um, legacy of one of the World Expos here um, in Portland. Um, this original building opened in 71, but it's nothing like it is today. Um, in um, 1986, the name was originally the Western Forestry Center. They changed it to the World Forestry Center. And if you visit the um, video, which is just next to the um, Whitewater Rapids um, experience there, they talk about the global mission in terms of deforestation and uh, other issues. Now, as I mentioned later in the video, it's not like they're only focusing on if you will, saving the trees or something like this. They definitely talk about sustainability, but they also talk about um, lumber, you know, timber practices that are um, sustainable and, you know, effective and ecologically sound. So I think it's a very balanced museum in many senses. Um, going back to the history, Again, once the name was changed in 86, and I'm just showing a little bit of the experience here, um, probably works a little bit better. You can see me with my camera um, in a bigger group, um, but it's basically um, a rapids experience. There's a narration, there's sound effects and so forth. Um, the experience basically is limited to the um, moving sensation on the screen. You don't actually move in the boat. Um, but in uh, 2005, that was the year that they had the big $7 million redevelopment. And I think this is really when this museum takes um, more of an interactive focus. And I think it's very important. If you're doing any museum work, you know that um, guests have a certain appetite for experience. And I think there's a good balance here between experience and education. Um, they've um, dispersed some of the exhibits. We're on the ground floor when I take you up on the upper floor. Same thing, there's some interactive stuff going on there. You see they've done um, a design focus here, um, running you know the gamut of um, all the different um, experiences you would uh, have in, in forest, talking about um, uh, you know issues of leisure, talking about worldwide issues of uh, ecological nature, getting into the um, issue of um, you know the forestry industry I guess you could call it among other issues uh, the flora and fauna that we see and so forth so um, there's a good I think emphasis here a good balance on the um, information the educational stuff that you get combined with the entertainment stuff and I think it's always a hard challenge in any museum is thinking exactly about how can you make it interesting all the while stressing some sort of um, 
educational component. If you have kids involved, of course, they want to have the hands-on stuff, and there's certainly enough of that here um, at the World Forestry Center that I think gives a balance between these uh, two perspectives, between education and entertainment. Um, it's, you know, there's, there isn't um, maybe the level of interactivity that you see, say, at a World Expo. And actually, as I was um, going through many of the exhibits here in Portland, it didn't remind me, not just because of the history of the Expo here in Portland, but it reminded me of some of the features that you see at a World Exposition, uh, mainly because there often is a balance of educational context with the pedagogical context with the uh, more entertainment-based um, context. Um, here you could uh, be introduced to some of the calls of the birds and the other uh, fauna here, including coyotes and so forth. Um, so it does, I think, give you an appreciation of what nature offers. And as we think about some of the issues facing the planet, um, particularly issues of, you know, related to U.S. capitalism and consumerism, this, I think, has a very um, important mission. Um, when I think about I'm sort of singling out U.S. society, other countries are certainly culprits in terms of uh, deforestation. But um, we have, I think, uh, Americans have an important role to play. And I think this is one of many examples of raising awareness about ecological issues. When you combine this with, let's say, something totally different, the Patagonia store, which I'm doing a feature on as well here in Portland, you begin to see how certain cities can have an emphasis on ecological issues or activist issues and how they begin to fit in, I think, with the mission of the city. Part of that, of course, and you see this in Seattle as well, as we look at the beautiful landscape, is the fact that it is such a beautiful city. It's such a green city that uh, really is, is striking just if you get out in the city and see some of the amazing trees and forests and so forth. Um, so we'll leave this uh, back area here. This is uh, uh, a nice uh, reflection area. You can go outside and enjoy uh, some of the scenery again, and we, we can take a look back at the um, exhibits here at the World Forestry Center. Um, just an extreme variety and again you can spend as much time as you want here um, a lot of emphasis on roles that people play as far as in this case you know what an environmental coordinator does so th there's a, a nice emphasis here I think in teaching young people about some of the opportunities to do their own conservation work and so forth um, I think we're gonna look at a little more of the um, animals that are featured here um, you see some uh, the plaque here talks about what's going on, say, in inside a log, the mammals, um, what happens when the log rots, and so forth. The one thing I thought was a little odd was just the, the stuffed animals that they used um, for the representations of the animals. Um, I don't know. It's just maybe a picky thing, and that could be the fact that they were thinking about um, the you know demographic of kids and how kids would, you know, be interested and so forth um, but just you know from a rather picky point maybe you know it's not the most effective thing but um, again I'm not privy to what they had in mind when we uh, pan up we can look a little bit at the tree trunk and you can see uh, just to the top of the building it's a very beautiful building you know the wood when you go across that walkway it's well designed I think two stories is doable for the guest it also has um, the circu circularity to it so you can walk in the circle and uh, make sure you see all the exhibits so it's it also I think has um, um, you know, an effective luck and appeal to it um, from the perspective of just its design and so forth. Here you see some of the scale um, tree trunks and so forth. Very fascinating, again, for children. Um, this talks about, you know, uh, forest uh, fires and so forth. There's a children's play area here, an information area that, of course, is also part of that wide-ranging appeal in terms of the different um, demographics who might be interested in going to the World Forestry Center. Um, little interactive stuff coming here get your hands dirty a little bit you can plant a tree it's not a real tree but it gives kids and again you could see they show a kid there with the, the tree seedling so it give it gives kids an opportunity to um, get their hands dirty so to speak it's something interactive and um, it has I think a lot in common with other museums out there so-called discovery museums you know the discovery museum itself I should do a video in the future is in a sense a genre of museums that is entertaining, interactive, and educational. And in many cases, they target um, parents 
and uh, their young children. Um, so try to take advantage of those uh, demographics. And often what these discovery museums have in common, I mentioned earlier an emphasis on you know, education combined with interactivity. We're looking at the tree ring here. Little uh, dendrochronology, if you know um, archaeology, dendrochronology is tree ring dating, and it's one of the early and uh, you know effective uh, forms of dating out there that all of us uh, learn about when we take our very first archaeology classes. So a little trivia there, if you're taking archaeology, you can remember dendrochronology, tree ring dating. Uh, but going back to the Discovery Museum idea, you know a lot of these are science focused. Um, the one, for example, in Reno, Nevada where I've, I've been in the past, um, has a little bit about the environment, but also has some stuff, say, about technology. Um, here's an interactive um, uh, tractor, I believe. And I think this was one of the things that um, there was something a little, there, there was just something a little funky with the screen here, with the video. So there was a little distortion there, I noted. We'll see what kind of video I took. Um, but, you know, they had, I think, enough interactive components here at the World Forestry Center to give kids something that they could really grasp onto that had a appeal. Um, there's some sensory stuff going on upstairs I'll show you. There's the technological stuff. So in this tradition of Discovery Museums, I think the uh, World Forestry Center has that kind of appeal. Um, and I think the popularity of these types of places uh, speaks to the idea that you can effectively combine these two components, the educational pedagogical with the entertainment um, interactive to have a really nice fusion of elements that allow you to do two things, right? It allows you to teach people a lesson without being too didactic and heavy handed, which I think they do. This is here a um, lumber mill. So again, we're not sort of shying away from the fact that trees do get used um, in some ecologically sound ways. And, and it's, you know, an interesting thing to think about if you've uh, sort of studied previous um, protests about, um, uh, you know, forestry practices and so forth across the United States, including in, in Portland and, and Washington and California. Um, but so what I was trying to say earlier about the Discovery Museum tradition is you can, I think, take some of the entertainment approaches and interactive approaches of say a Disney and there's not very much I wouldn't say it's Disney-esque here at all but you can combine that then as we look at a marimba here um, to get a sense of how wood is used and this is a pretty effective um, section of the museum where they're showing us all the different wood products this this was pretty cool I have to say seeing all this this gets into the um, would it be the tensile strength or um, you can correct me if that's wrong but the um, strength of wood versus other um, products, other building materials like steel. The, the museum has a very nice flow to it. I think they've thought very carefully about um, telling the story of forests in such a way that you, you progress through in a very logical way and also effective way, I think, in terms of keeping your interest. We'll be going here into the building section and you can see kind of uh, what opportunities are out there in terms of, of building approaches. Um, very effective. You know, every exhibit at the World Forestry Center, I think, has been well thought out and it has just enough interactivity. But what I was saying earlier was this fact that you can do the interactivity, you can do the entertainment side of things and also teach, teach a message. Um, museum purists out there who want very staid and boring and tired museums with you know, didactic plaques and static displays and nothing going on in an interactive sense, I, I think really haven't studied the variety of museums out there, the variety of approaches to design, to technological immersion of the guest, to sensory immersion of the guest. Um, and, you know, as a result, I think they lose out on some of the opportunities. Um, this entire room here then gets more into the design issues and it, it really has a construction, if not, you know, architectural focus talking about seismic issues here in terms of building. Um, by the way, another video I'm taking you to the rebuild, Rebuilding Center in Portland, Oregon, which uh, talk about building from reclaimed products, not just wood, but very, very interesting place. You don't want to miss that video uh, when I do that. But this is a nice area. They have a few, you know, seating areas. There are outdoor areas. Again, it's not a huge center, but um, they've thought about the space. I think it's very effective. There's a lot of information here you could take, ranging from building issues to... Um, issues related to forest fires and smart practices and, and all the issues, again, that you're getting throughout the center 
But um, you can take the stuff with you here, read about it, and then have the opportunity to reflect a little more deeply on it later. And that's always key with um, a place like this is you hope that you, A, have an effect on the guest, and B, uh, that it's a sustained effect. In other words, they take it with them, and hopefully they think about it. Sorry, I'm adjusting the uh, camera here. I've got the black magic, and I, I don't have a tripod, so we're getting a little shaky footage, and I am adjusting on the fly in my focus. But uh, I think I think you're doing just fine, right? It's not a, not a big issue. Um, so we're going to be leaving here then, um, um, leaving that you know design room, and then we'll we'll take a spin here through the remainder of the. Um, lower floor i think we're going to get up on top of the tractor um, if you have um they're actually not a tractor here right but it's a logging machine um, if you have um, young kids again they're into technology and fun stuff and so this i think extends that interest in um, getting the kid involved and being excited about the big machine and whenever you go inside one of these it's always um, impressive it, it reminds me a little bit when i went to the world expo in milan in 2015 uh, they had a lot of these giant machines. It was the um, Holland um, Agriculture Building. The um, there's a particular company that you know creates a lot of these uh, big machines. And uh, the difference there was that it was more the celebration of that's kind of cool. Look down in there. We're looking at the um, Japanese structure here. Um, again, emphasizing the wood construction. But you know at the um, yeah Japanese uh, tea house. But at the um, World Expo, I remember the tractors there were just sort of for show and focused on you know attracting kids and so forth so now we are magically um, we went up the stairs I didn't show the video but we're up on the second floor smaller but there's one really cool um, interactive section I want to uh, take you through and it's actually there on the left we'll go through the front so this is a little more about um, the diversity of forest around the world and then the, the, the various uh, products associated with wood. So it really does um, celebrate, I would say, um, just what's out there and what you can make with wood. This is a little sensory thing. It's blurry. I didn't um, do my focus, but this has cacao seeds. And so it allows you to smell um, some of the things associated with um, the forests um, around the world. And it's always good to have a, a sensory, um, you know, appeal if you can in your themed or immersive space just because it gives the guests a little more to uh, to take with them a little more diversity of experiences that they have there there are other things again you can tap the wood the marimba um, different wood musical instruments um, you could play with this little puppet here and so this is you know again good for kids it's good for people to see the range of products and things and cultures associated with um, the different forests around the world and I'm trying to remember here if I'm going to take you through the uh, adventure. You can see it has a global uh, focus here. And you basically go through various vehicles. So the first one is in Russia. And they have video screens. And this is not terribly interactive. I mean, you could say it's, it's pretty static. But because they've used a theme structure in each of the cases that you're going to walk through in the various uh, locales, um, it has more of a, a storytelling component to it, right? It's not just video screens. And I think sometimes you go to museums, um, I won't mention which it is, but there's a religious themed uh, museum out there. Now we're going through China, you get, get on a, a, a boat tour, scenic boat tour, you can see. But um, this particular museum I'm thinking of has um, a didactic focus in terms of religion, but they, they have so many just static displays and or video screens on a wall that aren't incorporated with the rest of the material culture. There's no storytelling and so forth. And this is one of the best, I think, um, consistent storytelling approaches I've seen here. Essentially, all of these are, if you will, an excuse to watch a video. And they have a motion detection thing here. So when they detect people in here, kind of like with the rapids ride, um, the video loop starts to play. And, you know, again, a video loop, loop is not necessarily um, an amazing feature. I think we see it um, time and again in different um, themed immersive spaces, museums, or consumer spaces. But what's cool here is that they put that within the context of a vehicle of some sort, each of which then has a connection to a different ecosystem uh, around the world. So we have Russia, China, we'll also get get into uh, South Africa. And so that that's kind of effective, right? Because it, it maintains a consistent um, storytelling approach. And you'll see here going into the next um, 
area, and this is actually we're in uh, Amazonian rainforest first, and uh, it allows you. This is one of uh, this is probably the most interactive component, if you will. It's not really a theme park ride, but um, it shakes, and it's not a motorized thing, but it's just on a, a pulley of some sort, and so it's an unstable platform as you're standing in this um, this vehicle. So it's kind of cool, right? It, it again is economical, I think, in terms of what it does. It's not a, a ride per se. If you're gonna get into the ride vehicle or VR stuff, augmented reality, um, you're talking about an entirely different operation. And who knows, I'm always curious about what is planned you know, for the future in terms of um, updating things and uh, you know, giving guests more interactivity. When you have a nonprofit focus, unlike a theme park or something like this, right? You are, in a sense, uh, a little more cash strapped and that's why it's important to visit places like the World Forestry Center to support them and so forth. We're looking down a little bit now and you're getting a sense of just the height of the second uh, story looking down um, at the first floor. And I began the video with um, a focus on the uh, camera actually that you saw. We're, look we're looking at a few more things here. Um, a really nice table, but I wanted to show you that camera from up top as we saw it in the uh, first part of the video. And indeed that is uh, what you're controlling on the uh, the first floor as I try to uh, locate it here, looking down a little bit. Um, but yeah, you see the pulley right there and there's the camera. So um, let me close this video out today here at the World Forestry Center with a little of my on-site commentary, commentary just as I was leaving the center here in Portland, Oregon. Okay, so I am uh, just making my way out of the World uh, Forestry Center here on a pretty rainy but uh, calm day in Portland. This is the uh, weather I imagined when I came here yesterday. It was actually kind of hot and sunny and didn't seem very much like uh, Portland. But um, the Forestry Center, you know, I have to say, I had a number of great um, exhibits. And it's one of the things that um, I think, you know, reminds me when I'm walking through this space, it reminds me a little bit. I'm just looking here at some maybe... Uh, yeah, it's a petrified tree stump. There's actually stuff you can explore on the grounds um, in addition to what you see, um, see the petrified tree stump there, in addition to what you see inside the building. And I have to say, you know, first impression is, um, it reminds me a lot of what you see at a World Expo, just the type of space, how it's designed, and also the didactic approach, because clearly in a space like this, you're trying to pr promote sustainability. If you know anything about Portland, it certainly does uh, fit in with um, the ambiance here, the wilderness, the, the sense of the outdoors, and the politics, of course, that has uh, uh, attracted people and both uh, attracted, you know, people who support the politics and also people who are, I guess, de detractors of it. Um, so it reminds me in the didactic and pedagogical approach really of a World Expo space. The other thing that I would say about it is that as you go inside, um, you realize it's a pretty small space. I think an hour is about maybe what most people would spend here. You could certainly spend longer. Um, but an hour seems to be about the amount of time that um, it took me to go through this space. Two stories, uh, two floors, as you're seeing in some of my videos uh, that I took on site. And um, certainly for a small space, I think it does a lot. Um, there's a, a pretty heavy reliance on video screens. In some cases, there's some bleed between some of the video screens from one room to the next. Um, but I think they've done some creative things. You know, they're not using the latest immersive technologies. Um, this building opened originally in um, 71, and then over the years has, has undergone some renovations and um, I believe in, in 2005 was the really big renovation. And they've done certainly quite a lot with the building. Um, there's hands-on stuff, so it's certainly a, a great place for kids to explore things. But overall, you know, that message of sustainability is what's important and I think you get you get it throughout the building but it's not maybe heavy-handed in how it expresses concerns about sustainability environmentalism and deforestation um, there's a lot about design there's a lot about the uses of wood and so it's not like by any means saying you know we shouldn't use lumber or timber so I think it it bridges the gap maybe between those who would be proponents of the timber industry and those who would be against it and are concerned about you know the loss of uh, forests and old growth trees and, and so forth and so it's something interesting to consider here um, at the World Forestry uh, Center. Hope you enjoyed the video feature today here looking at sustainability uh, at the World Forestry Center here in Portland, Oregon. Please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.